Newton's Law of Motion and the Old Faithful Geyser. The way geysers work <clears throat> is that water is going to seep into the geyser's plumbing system, and the plumbing system is a series of fissures or cracks that run deep into the Earth's surface, sometimes miles deep. Magma at the base of the geyser is going to superheat the water. Also, water at the bottom of the geyser is under tremendous amounts of pressure. That pressure is caused from all of that water above pushing down on the lower levels of water. The greater the pressure, the more heat is going to be required to bring that water to a boil and push the bubbles to the surface. Eventually though, water is going to reach that boiling point and then it's going to become turbulent. This is going to push small amounts of water out, which is going to decrease the pressure, drop in the boiling point, and causing the geyser to flash. The steam then expands the volume of water causing an eruption. During Newton's laws of motion, the first law, which says an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same direction and speed unless acted on, upon by an outside object. So heating the geyser's water overcomes the water's tendency to stay at rest. Once the water is moving upward, the force of gravity and decrease of heat energy due to energy transfer eventually causes the eruption to stop. The second law of Newton's laws of motion says that an object's acceleration is dependent on forces acting upon it and its mass. So if the force increases, the acceleration increases. So with the geyser, the acceleration of water from the geyser is dependent upon the water's total mass and the amount of heat energy provided at the base of the geyser. The third law, for every action or force, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the force caused from heat energy and resulting water expansion is going to equal the force of water that is actually erupting from the geyser. I went and put my dancing shoes on, yeah, I was a boy.